I'll bull for you completely, man and master in Wallace. Welcome to Jim Up Jim. Thank you. We're going to be talking, or under you're going to be talking about this uh, a, a, a Korean karate. Yes, that's it and, exactly. Uh, that's yes. a, a particular discipline, and I invite you to give us a bit of a, a background to it and what the philosophy and what the, the, the kind of discipline it is. Okay, um, basically, Tang Soo Do is a Korean martial art. It's a traditional martial art, so it differs from the sports side of things where techniques are more to score points or, or, or something. So a traditional martial art has the background of um, the philosophies and ancient concepts of um, um, Asian philosophy. So when a student typically comes into a tr traditional martial arts, they would learn uh, the bow, the etiquette, the respect, yeah. and why, and what that would reflect in someone's life and how how to um how to bring that in in your life so you could um you know like we say that etiquette is contagious just like politeness is contagious yeah. you know so um if we get a group of students that act a certain way maybe they could rub off on others it helps the society uh, you know okay and there's... so but what what is it that um um distinguishes Tang Sudo from others because what what you just said Pardon my ignorance, because I'm really not into martial arts, as you can probably uh, judge by yourself. But uh, what you've said seems to apply to a number of martial arts, that's number of different types. It. What would distinguish Tang Sudo, and especially how, how would someone choose Sang Sudo and not any other? Well, you know, um, I guess in, in you know in, in Malta, sports is quite a big thing, so um, Tang Sudo wouldn't be a sport. So I see. to distinguish Tang Sudo to you know as a as a as a traditional classical martial art, other than um, the sport elements, would be the fact that um, that we do actually practice philosophy, that we do teach the etiquette side of, of it. You know, so um, it wouldn't just be learning um, to kick and punch. It would be learning why to kick and punch. Um, we also have the background of uh, weaponry as well. Um, and the weaponry classical side of it would be using the sword, would be using a small uh, dagger, would be using a short stick, a long stick. And it's to teach students, although, although we, we teach how to use, it would be more the concept of why not to use, you know. Ah, okay. Um, so it would be what's called the, the mudo or the budo side of the martial element as to learning, you know, why not to, I you see. know. Uh, we were, we've just been watching some moves as well uh, <laughs> on screen as you, were, as you were explaining. But this is, so really and truly what you're mentioning, you're, you're insisting on this not being a sport. That's it. So it's more on the, the disposition of who approaches Tang Sudo, which is yes. different, no? In, yes. In that yes. This is not a competitive approach, but no. this is purely for the, the value of the yes. martial art itself. Yes. Martial arts has to have an impact in your life. If it didn't have an impact in your life, then we wouldn't be able to serve a, a better purpose. Um, an athlete... I mean, I, 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 have, I have a lot of respect when it comes to kickboxing, taekwondo, you know, um, they, they create athletes. And when I say athletes, they're next level athletes, you know, they train five, six times a week uh, and they really do well. But for us, it's a bit different being a traditional martial art. The element would be solely on just, you know, anyone, anyone can make it. You know, uh, we try to create a livelihood for each student where they just give as much as they can. You try to have an influence on their life that they would keep up with, you know, once or twice a week going out for a run, you know, cert certain value changes within their life, you know, so it wouldn't just be on the fact that you're going to become an athlete and you're going to compete in this tournament or that tournament. But um, we have a, a slightly different approach, which I mean, fully respect the athletic approach. But for us, it would be more about, you know, just bringing anyone in and trying to make a difference. So for the personal development of the audience. Personal audience. development, yes. There's, uh, again, as a purely as a bystander here, but there seems to be a strong spiritual element to, to martial arts. Oh, yeah. It's not just a matter of moves and the physique and uh, agility and sharpness, but somehow it, it seems to reflect even in the way you speak yourself for example, yes. there's, a, there's this <laughs> a composure well when you when you look at uh, traditional martial arts any art that ends in the word do would be um, do means Taoism so it's like the way how to live the way how to do certain things you know so um, any like karate do 
judo, aikido, taekwondo, you know, certain, certain philosophies that you must put within to the art. But um, I mean, we practice certain ancient cultures every day without knowing the shaking of a hand, mm -hmm. meaning trust and loyalty that you're not going for your sword. Exactly. The bow, meaning I trust that you're not going to cut my head off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, certain things that we do every day, but without meaning. So I think in martial arts, we just try to add the etiquette and what the meaning is behind it. And sort of like we practice it within a cultured area where we would then walk out and fully respect and take that into our daily lives. I see. Is there a belt system as well? In, in there is a belt system. So the belt system is a philosophical thing for most arts, but the belt system came from the style of judo, which is a sport, oh, sure. <laughs> you know, and um, basically um, the philosophies behind it would be that, for example, the white belt would be put in a sneed, seed beneath the winter snow and then the yellow belt would be the germination of life as a student would grow, you know, and then the green, like the, 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 the turf, would be the rapid development, and then the brown going back and nourishing your roots and respecting where you came from, you know, so there is a philosophical path when you come to the belt system, you know, and we try to have, um, we try to instill that within the students so it reflects within their livelihood, you know, and they would then start reflecting, uh, appreciating, kind of like ikigai, you know, okay, kind yeah. of understanding different, you know, um, life elements and start sitting back and trying to appreciate more what's around you rather than you know, what's going through you. I, I'm curious because um, uh, as a Mediterranean man, it, what you mentioned doesn't really um, go hand in hand with a Mediterranean <laughs> approach to life. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> with, without really, this is not, not being judgmental at all, but I'm, I'm curious as to, to how um, Mediterranean people take to something like, like this martial arts because it's really not quite mm. our... In ingrained philosophy of life yeah. in general. We can it's not. go for a bit more noise and a bit more expression. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when it comes to martial arts, it takes a lot of discipline and it takes a lot of self-courage as well. But um, what I love about Malta and what I really love about it is Maltese are very hard workers. And when it comes inside the dojang where we train, the Maltese love working hard and they're very respectful. So you've, in, in, in the Mediterranean cultures enriched within family, culture, bringing things together. And I think this goes hand in hand with traditional martial arts, you know. And um, in fact, I've got quite a large school where I teach. I've got around 80 students. And these students really give their all. And not just that, they give their all into help running the club as well. I see. Which makes it much easier, you know. Oh. So, um, no, uh, uh, I really, really... Interesting. In yeah, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. An interesting viewpoint because uh, even when it comes to sports we're into the more commercial sports we're more into the more expressive but in this case i can understand i can yeah. understand what you're saying <laughs> um uh, there's also the, these forms no the hyungs part of my pronunciation and the cook jays the cook jays yes yeah. so basically in in martial arts when you look at the history of martial arts people were so illiterate like hundreds of years ago that no one could really read or write so the only way for them to pass on a style or a system of martial arts would be by creating a sequence of movements together. Now you've probably seen it on the Olympics where they do the katas as they call in yes. Japanese karate. Well those are the equivalent to what we would call hyangs. But basically there's a hidden meaning within each uh, hyang. You know, so you would do a sequence of techniques and to the untrained eye they would just be movements but to a traditional martial artist or any martial artist that's training there would be hidden techniques within that I see. and um, your style is based around those hidden movements interesting so yes. you know, these have developed as a way of expression before exactly re reading and writing exactly that's, that's exactly <laughs> that puts things in a lot of perspective oh, so Ian thank you very much for thank joining you very us much. it was very interesting to hear <laughs> I suppose when it comes to age limits both young and old, is there any age limit? No, no. no. So someone who's got some time on his or her hands and wants to try it out, one can actually look at it. And, That's and it. See. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much for Thank being here. Thank you very much. And, uh, wish you all the best in, in gaining as many followers as possible because all the, all the characteristics you mentioned are very much needed in our society today. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank wow. you.